Good afternoon, everyone. I am your host for today, Poonam Rai, from fifth semester PSD, Physics Department. A warm welcome to everyone, respected Sir Abhijit Dutta, our guest, Father Vivan, a principal of Ramakko College Pura, and the other faculty members and the non-teaching staff. I also welcome everyone here in today's program. Before we proceed with the event, I would love to introduce everyone to my department, the Department of Physics. The Department of Physics was established in 1989. The, uh, the, the BSc course started in 1992. The BSc with Physics honors, well, that is the three years course, started in 1997. Presently, there are 25 students in first semester, 23 students in third semester, and 22 students in fifth semester. The latest batch of the students who passed out this year did a splendid result. Chainsar D. Sama scored 89.70% and all the students passed out with first division. Also two of them cleared jam and the seven of the students got admission in NAMU for pursuing their further studies. The students of physics department, organizers, freshers, party social, and picnic every year. We also have field trips organized by the department of physics for the students. As we all belong to the science background, let us understand what exactly science is. In general, Science involves a pursuit of knowledge covering general truths or the operations and discoveries of fundamental laws. The most interesting thing about science is that it's never finished. Every discovery leads to more questions, mysteries, to something else that needs explanation. Let us also understand what exactly digital transformation is about. It is the adoption of digital technology by the organization to improve the business process, value for customers and innovation. Digitalization is typically the process of converting analog and other formats of information to digital form. With the introduction of the World Wide Web, Digitalization scope, dimension, scale, speed, and effect fundamentally change, resulting in the accelerated transformation of society and its institution. There has been a lot of transformation in the recent times, like the computers evolved over time, becoming more advanced. There has also been transformation in various devices, like your mobile phones. In recent time, 5G is also about to be launched in India. In this ongoing pandemic situation, everyone started to work from home. That is, everything became online. You have to do everything from your home, from your mobile phone, either your laptop, etc. This shows how rapidly the world is transforming digitally. Now, I would like to invite Sir A.G., the IQAC coordinator, who himself is an alumni of this institution, to give the welcome speech. program for the last two years when uh, 
So we have visited Dhaka was coming to Tura. So we were planning, but uh, during Puja time, he used to come every year, but somehow or the other, we could not, we could not uh, exactly make the time because we were also having holidays at that time. Now, uh, uh, he was in the first match, okay. Uh, he, uh, sorry, Emma will give the introduction about him, but uh, something which I want to tell as a teacher. So, he was a mediocre student. Though he has a lot of brain, but he didn't utilize that brain during his time. But I think after BSc, he realized that he has to do something. And he went to Chennai, but he struggled there. He struggled there getting a job. So it's same thing like every one of us. So then he thought, he discussed with other uh, elders, our teachers were there, then with other people, and then he took admission in Symbiosis Pune for MBA. And later on, he did quite well in that one, and he was placed in uh, Ericsson. Before that, he was placed in few other companies. Uh, Sir Emar will uh, tell you details about him. Uh, now, uh, another thing I uh, I think uh, Sir Emar won't be telling is that he was awarded the star alumni uh, this one achiever for the year 2004-2005 by Symbiosis Pune. Symbiosis Pune is one of the top ten. Uh, uh, MB institutes of India. So now also he goes to different institutes in B schools. B schools means business schools and delivers lectures. Today he is going to talk on digital transformations. So basically his idea is to tell that uh, generally we think that always we go for either medical or engineering. He will talk on such things that which are beyond medical engineering. We can opt after BSc, what are your possibilities other than MSc also? Okay? So, actually, he wanted students from commerce and economics background also since he's from MBA. But due to COVID, we cannot bring many students here. So, we limited ourselves. Uh, and I welcome Dr. Ivan. As I told, she is my classmate, and another thing is that she is also the uh, secretary of the Alumni Association of Don Bosco College. She was awarded the Woman of the Year by West Government's District in the year 2019. 2019, as a district administration, she was awarded the Woman of the Year. Okay? So, uh, it's an achievement for her, it's an achievement for us being an ex-student of Don Bosco College. Today, uh, another simultaneous program was going on in, uh, in, 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 uh, from 11 o'clock. Uh, that is uh, the Red Ribbon Club of Don Bosco College. And there are also two persons were there, both the doctors are both were from Don Bosco College. She was one of them and Dr. Bandi was there. She is also an ex-student of Don Bosco College college and actually my student also. So uh, our students have been placed in different parts of the world, not only in Tura or Meghalaya or Garo uh, uh, So our students have been placed in different parts of the world. Uh, I would also welcome Father Principal who is the backbone, uh, always pushing is there from his side uh, to do this type of uh, seminars, talks, webinars, whatever it is. And Sir Rathan, thank you very much, sir. In spite of your ill health, you have come. Uh, you are the only one from other departments to come here. So, thank you, sir, very much. Uh, I welcome even all the semester students who have come over here. Please interact. Please interact with the resource person. Okay? Please don't make it a one-way topic. <coughs> Okay, one way traffic, so please internet. Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing uh, to the students. Last year, the Department of Physics, along with uh, ITUSC, Don Bosco College, Pura, organized an international wave conference during the 
pandemic time on 30th and 31st of July, and you will not believe that we had, it was a grand success. There were 1,900, 1,391 participants from 17 countries and four continents. So it was a huge achievement. In fact, now our resource persons were from all over the world. In fact, after we finished the uh, after we finished the web conference uh, from special investigation team of the Indian government, they came to ask principal that whether there was anyone from China in our this world. Yes, there were participants from China. There was one lady, an Indian lady, who was working in China. She also was a resource person. And in fact, uh, that web, international web conference was such a hit. Actually, it was the, probably the largest international web conference in Northeast India, till date. Okay? Uh, many, many colleges, uh, or many persons throughout, throughout India, throughout the whole world, they congratulated us. I think principal also got many congratulations. So from a very small place of Dura, we could put Dura in the world map. That's why I just wanted to give the information, especially to the first semester and even the third semester students because they were very new at that moment. Uh, so with this uh, few words, not few words, more than few words, I end my speech here. Once again, welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to request for the principal uh, to hand over the scarf to Abhijit and also Dr. Ivan, please uh, hand over the memento to Abhijit. We are not giving to you, ma'am. We are only giving to him. Please, yes. Thank you. Round of applause. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to all of you. This is what we can give. We cannot give more than that. Okay, I hand over the mic to uh, Punam. Uh, 
no, we have what we call dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. All of you have got only, right? Oh, sorry, uh, we, we don't have dual citizenship. You have dual citizenship, sorry. Uh, the present generation, you have dual citizenship, while we have only one citizenship. All those who are born, maybe in the 80s. For example, for us, right, the teachers and all of us are the citizens of India. Am I right? The present generation of students are the, 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 the citizen of India and you are also the citizen of media. Because all of you are born in the age where media or digitalization happened. In our time when we were small, we have only one channel. And what is that channel? Huh? Now your students, how many channels you have in the TV? How many? Right? You have number of channels. You want to go for news channel, you have news channel. You hate Arna Goswami, you change from Republic to maybe NDTV 24-7. Right? Girls like fashion TV. They can go for fashion channel and uh, boys like and not wrestling. Right? If they don't like wrestling, they change the channel, they get IPL. If they don't like IPL, they change the channel and we have even movies channel. If you don't like Star Wars, you have what? What is the other channel? Dear students, what are the other channels that you watch? UTV movies. Huh? UTV movies. What? UTV movies. UTV. Right. So we are all expert in that. Just to say that you are actually born lucky because you are born in the age of maybe India, digital age, right? Which is completely different from the years we were born. For us, learning to use the mobile phone takes us at least one month. My mother used a smartphone, but she knows only how to check or have call records and to call back. You ask her to save the number, she will not know. So she's using a smartphone, but she will not know how to save number. She will know only how to call. That also in her call records, it is only there. So if you ask her to call somebody who she had called one month back, she will have to go all through, right? The last call record of her and call somebody else. But I have seen students of today. They come to my office to get some signatures, some of them are catching their mobile phone behind and they are also typing message to their friends. Right? I mean, this is the change that we have seen. We are not living anymore in the age of what we are living. That's why we are so lucky. But at the same time, when we talk about digital transformation, you are in a more difficult situation, dear young boys and girls. If you do not use Though if you do not know how to use the media, I call it the media, when it comes to digitalization, or maybe other uh, instruments, the instrument or the media will use you. If you do not know how to use it, then it will use you. That's why there is danger. That's why we need to learn. What are these digital transformations that has taken place maybe in the last say 20 to 25 years? I remember seeing a mobile phone only in the year 2003. 2003. That was the time I think when media, I mean when maybe a mobile phone comes to in, in, in reality. Or even before that. But I saw it only in 2003. And when I saw a mobile phone for the first time, I was surprised. I said, what is this instrument? Because I have seen right, a telephone where we can't take our mouth because there is a wire connected to it. Now, as I said, the mobile is actually tying all of us into or uh, tying us into the mobile. Earlier, the instrument used to be tied to the wire and we are free to move around. Now, it is not so. Because the media is tying you engrossed into maybe the mobile phone or anything instrument that we use. So there is a danger, but at the same time, it's important that we become aware of it. So I was talking about seeing a mobile phone for the first time. 
Now I used the mobile phone for the first time in the year 2006. I was doing VFTM. 2006. And that time also, to get a SIM card, we have to pay almost 700 rupees for one SIM card. Today, you have one SIM card free of cost. You get angry with your girlfriend, you change the mobile SIM, right? Or a boyfriend, and you get free SIM card. That's why nowadays, boys and young boys and girls, they keep changing their numbers. They get angry with their girlfriend or boyfriend, they change not only the boyfriend and the girlfriend, they also change their mobile number. Am I right, boys and girls? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Some of them don't want to say it. But just to say that digital transformation has changed all of us. But it's important to be aware of it. And I'm happy that I'm here this year in order to invite you on all that. I wish all of you all the best and this is also a privilege for all of you dear students. And this is what we do in the Moscow College. We make it an opportunity when we have any of our alumni to speak to our students. First of all, what it means to be challenged and how through that challenge they have bridged and grabbed the opportunity and has become somebody today. When any guest lecturer come to Nebu to our campus, we also try to get them to come to the college in order to give a lecture to our students. Because we want not only the students of Nebu to gain out of the lecture, but also our own students. So the college try our level best to give opportunities for the students. But one thing that I realized with the youth of today, when we are talking about digital transformation, we do not grab the opportunity that is given. We do not grab the opportunity that is given. I wish that more students were present here, but some of them will say, why should we go for this lecture? Let us go back home. Or let us go to the canteen and sit in the canteen. The college try our level best to give the opportunity, but the students do not grab the opportunity. Dear students, this is my kindness request for all of you. If you can see Abhijit, Dr. Devon, and right? others who were uh, students of the Moscow College and have been placed in the society today, is because when the opportunity was given to them, they grabbed the opportunity. They grabbed the opportunity, learned from it, and have become someone. And I wish all of you to, dear students, that you grab the opportunity that is given to you and transform yourself and become someone in the society. And our dream will be fulfilled only when we are able to contribute to the society. Most of us are suffering what company call I sickness. Not I sickness, but capital I sickness. Only I, me, myself. Once I am happy, once I am given the opportunity, I forget about it. But that will not bring you happiness. Happiness will come to you if you are able to share your life with others. Happiness will come to you if you are able to share the life with others. We have Abhijit, we have Dr. Ewan, Pastor Kuno from Moscow, who have contributed so much to the society, who have given their time, their energy, for the development of the society. And for all of us, if we want to have a fulfilled life, it's only sharing our life, our gift, our talent, opportunity for others. And this is what I wish for all of you, dear students. Be the change that you want to see in the society. But the change that we want to see is the change that we transform the society in which we live. And this may be put into practice the very word of Mahatma Gandhi. I wish all of you all the best for this lecture and may this transform our life. Not only the way we look at the digital world, but more importantly, transform our very human life. Wish you once again all the best and God's blessing upon you. Thank you.
happy to share along with our students. Yes, uh, we were like 1991. We were in Namaso College and uh, sirs were, sirs were our, we, were, we were their students. We were very mischievous, the right sir? <laughs> of course. As father was saying, father was saying, Namaso College is an institute that gives you the opportunity. Grab it. Grab it. Okay? See, we were the students of Gromoso College in the 90s. And after passing our class 12, we have gone to compete with students from all over India. And you will not believe we could beat them. Because the schools in Tura is not less. It is how you use it. Everyone is gifted and born. But if you do not know how to polish it and take the opportunity, you will not reach anywhere. Right? So you should not feel that I'm just from a small place like Tura. My college is this college. I'm from that. No. You should be. The opportunities are given to you. It's how you use it. Right? So I'm very happy. Uh, Dr. Arindam is my classmate. And I'm happy to say I'm very proud of him because not only in this in academic institutions he's helping us and we are coordinating and working, but even in COVID vaccination, he's with us, he's supporting us and mobilizing the beneficiaries to get vaccinated. Now, as a district maternal and child health and the district immunization officer, we are fighting the pandemic together. You have seen that we all have not been able to attend to your classes last year. Somehow we opened this year. You all were sick with all your online classes. It's really frustrating, both for the students and for the teachers. But life has to go on. But how can life go on if we are not helping to stop this pandemic? And for this, for us to win this pandemic, there are only four tools that is available in the world today. Four tools. Can anyone tell me what are those four tools? Can anyone say? Huh? Yes? Yes. Mask. And then number two? Hand washing or hand sanitizing. Number three? Maintaining a distance. And number four. And number four. Vaccination. Well done, students. Now, my next question is Are you all about 18 years? Yes. How many of you are vaccinated? Be frank. If you're not vaccinated, never mind. But do it immediately. Do it immediately. Why I'm telling you? Because in your place at home, you have your grandparents, you have your younger siblings, you have people who are not able to take, take the vaccine either because they are not eligible or because they are so many other problems that they cannot take. You as students, you are always coming out. You don't know right now who is having the virus. Right? So, to protect yourself and your loved ones, what you have to do, you have to take the vaccine. I'm not here to promote vaccination. I'm speaking on behalf as a public health specialist. For, us, for me, I do not work with one to one patients. I work with lakhs of population. Today, West Carolina, I can probably say, we are the second largest district in the world of Meghalaya. This year, East Kasi is one of the largest districts, had so many cases and deaths because there were many refusals for vaccination. But for us, we went aggressively with our vaccination. We thank all the stakeholders, the church leaders, the NGOs, the families, the educational 
Jesus disputes everyone for helping us and supporting us in mobilizing people to get vaccinated. And we are, as on last night, able to vaccinate nearly 290,000 people in West Palestine. We will not believe these vaccinations. We will reduce the number of cases because we have done a massive campaign in the month of March, April, May, July. So when the quick second wave struck Meghalaya, along with the rest of India, our people were protected. We have only 7,216 cases as of last night. Yesterday we had zero cases. Before yesterday we had three cases. Surprisingly, one teacher, two teachers, in fact. Okay? And can you imagine the number of deaths we had this year? Can anyone guess? When we hear of hundreds and hundreds of deaths in other places, we have nearly 8 lakh population that is only the ethnic population. We are not talking about the migrants. We have only 54 deaths. We are sorry we lost 54 lives. But because of vaccination, we were able to protect and save lives. All of those 54 deaths also, 95% was not vaccinated. That's why we lost them. Three were vaccinated, but we lost them because they had some other comorbid conditions like cancer, diabetes, and hypertension. So vaccines really work. Vaccines work. That's why we are requesting again and again. If you have not taken the vaccine because you believe in the hearsay, you believe in the real world, you look at the YouTube, you see someone says that the other men are both take this vaccine. It will cause this, it will cause that. Do not believe in hearsay. Use technology. Use the actual government resources to find out about the vaccine, the doubts, the misconceptions, the myths. But do not, if you misuse technology, you will be misguided. You will be misguided. Okay? So, my only request is that those who have not taken, please take the vaccine. And I only to talk to Father, if you want the vaccination at your college itself, I am ready to set up a session here. Two types of beneficiaries we can have. One is those with ID, meaning the Epic or the bank account. But for those who do not have, I can still manage a special session. We can open an ID with the principal's ID. But please get the vaccine as soon as possible before the third wave hits you all. Before the third wave hits you all, it's going to hit very badly. And the person that you to hit is your children under 18 years, for whom there are no vaccines. And you do not have facilities in Garo Hills to cater to that population. Right? You will not believe when someone is tested positive, whether he is your family member, your anyone, Automatically, your psychology changes, your mentality changes. Only a person who has been tested positive will know the pain that person has gone through. Somehow or the other, when someone, if the post from all of us now, anyone is tested positive, immediately the way that person will be treated, that person has to undergo the mental trauma. And the worst part is it affects the lungs, which is an irreversible damage. Even though we have we, we have oxygen, we can they will not be able to take in. And we have the from people who died, they were requesting vaccines to be given at the last moment. But remember, two doses of the vaccine, first dose and the second dose has to be given within three months apart. You cannot give beyond before that. So, the more you delay, the more your second dose will be delayed. And if any, by any chance you get the COVID now, again you will be delayed for another three months. Okay, so my only request is that as students, take your ownership. Ownership is very important. Don't think that I'm just a student, I'm Amukha, I don't do 
No. You can be the change. You can be the change. Everyone can be the change. Lift up each and every other. Your neighbor, your family members, your friends. I'm sure there are some friends who say that no, Razawa, Kenna, Saman Avana, Radabena. You have to motivate, uh, motivate them. It is not only for your benefit, it's for the benefit for all. Okay? And now when speaking about technology, the world has gone so fast. You will not believe how we use our, this technology even in COVID. With the coming of with COVID pandemic, now everything physical has been done away with. Your exams, your classes, even up to the ASHA level, we have the lowest field worker at the field that is called the ASHA, that is the accredited social life activities. They have to be with the mobile anytime. Their visits are through the app. Through the app. The visits are at all GPS link. We cannot just lie. The mother tracking we do, pregnant mothers, our workers have to visit all through the app, all through technology. So we have today Mr. Abhijit, who is an alumni of the Musto College. This is a good opportunity which the college has given you. Use this opportunity and take it forward. Don't think that we are from Tura, we are from a small place. No, never have that mentality. We can do it, it all depends on us. And take ownership in whatever you do. Take ownership. And my request is that do not wear masks just because you are entering the campus or someone is seeing you. Wearing a mask is for your protection. Self-care, self-love. Unless you care, unless everyone care for themselves, you cannot help. Because let's just say, God help those who help themselves. Right? So whether someone sees, whether father principal sees, whether lecturer sees or not, always wear the mask. Always wear the mask. Okay? Sanitize your hand frequently. Always carry a sanitizer. Now, this microphone has been touched by so many people. You never know, but you have to know the source, how it enters. Even though I'm vaccinated, I can get the virus any time. I was the first person in the entire district of West Carlville to take the first shot. But I was confident in our system. I was confident in our vaccines. So, have that confidence. The vaccines are for the benefit of everyone. So, please spread this news and make the best use of whatever the Moscow College is giving you. We are very, we are always proud, right, Alina? We are always right. And the best part, I'll tell you, Sir Ratan is right in front of me. You know what we are today? Because of lecturers like Sir and all, they always believe in us. They always supported us. You will not believe. They always supported and believed in us. And whatever they have given us, we have made the best use of it. So once again, I thank you, uh, I thank Sir, I thank Father, I thank the family, I thank Sir Rathkosi and all Sir and all everyone gathered up, the young generation, be the change, take ownership and be the leaders. That is what John Moscow College is all about. Okay? So once again, thank you all and wish you all the best. Thank you.
He has done post graduation in digital business from MIT, Sloan School, and Columbia Business School, USA. MBA from Symbiosis, India, in marketing and finance. And uh, this is a proud moment for us. Uh, BSc from Don Bosco College, Pura, has been Physics Honors. So I am very proud that he is with us. And I am proudly announcing that he is one of the uh, now successful uh, person in life. So I am very, very happy. And regarding his extracurricular activities, uh, a speaker at various industry forums, involved as a mentor and advisor to various panels and councils that aim towards the progress of various policies, visiting faculty to various B schools and engineering colleges, or as an advisory role to various startup organizations. Now, currently he is working with Ericsson as a director, new business initiative for 5G and digital transformation to large telecom across India, Southeast Asia and Australia Asia. Prior to Ericsson, Ojit was in telemanagement forum, Oracle Corporation, Tech Mohindra, etc. where he was responsible for managing broad range of IT and telecommunication business, complex solution, consultancy and IT application skills. Obviously, to work in various geographies as and terrains like India, Asia Pacific, Middle East and Africa, European region and in the entire in the entire area span. So uh, he has lots of uh, uh, opportunities for him as uh, uh, Dr. Yuan has told that he grabbed it and now he is a successful man. So with these words, I think much uh, more has to be there. So that's I summarize a little bit. So I always him, I always it uh, good help. And uh, this is the first Navratri and may my goddess do us our blessings on you for your future and your work. And you have good health and do good work for the society, for the Sura in particular, and we'll be always happy to see you as uh, we are very proud that you are a proud student of the Gospel Sura. Thank you so much. Because 
most of most of the people who okay, who are coming from a big place, they have already something in their mind because they have already seen. Okay, their their risk appetite is very less. But we being from very small place, we always have seen that okay, how to how to manage the things, how can we take various risks and how we can become more successful. Okay, ma'am has talked about various COVID scenarios. We all know that how COVID is a kind of a painful experience for all of us. We have uh, lost a lot of our near and dear ones. It has also impacted a lot in our industry. And economically, if any country is impacted, then obviously there is always a possibility that there will be a lot of job losses and everything. But having said so, if you go to the next slide, please. Okay. Having said so, uh, if you if you see the overall overall economic uh, economics, okay, how how why India is a kind of a good destination for all of us, and why. Why it is so important for us to understand? Okay, some of these figures. Okay, so these are some facts and figures from various consulting organizations, be it your McKinsey, be it your World Bank, or be it your IMF. Okay, while we have seen that in last one one and a half years, the economy has come down drastically, but now all of a sudden that okay, there is a V shaped V shape. Okay, economy is improving. So there is a lot of things are happening across the thing, across the world. But India, if you see, there is a sweet spot because if you see all the projections from various consulting organizations, you will find that any anything between your nine to twelve percent, okay, that is what the various consulting organization they are they are forecasting that India will grow in the next one or two years or three years, okay, down the line. And when any industry is growing at that rapid uh, uh, rapid pace, uh, pace. Okay, there is always a possibility that there will be a lot of opportunities will be there for us. So, if you see compared to the other 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 countries, okay, be it your uh, your the African nations, be it your US, be it your Africa or British, okay, India and China, it is growing rapidly. But um, if you if you see India as a whole, because it, it, it is showing that okay, it will grow between your 10 to 12 percent. And why it is possible? Because because there are they, from a government standpoint, there are there are a lot of initiative government is taking. It is it is it is uh, already already taken a lot of steps. Okay, so that okay, which is favorable to the various industries. So there are a lot of inflows are coming in our in our industry. So when there are a lot of inflows are coming in our industry, means there are a lot of opportunities are there. So, so typically, if you see that, okay, I think some of you might be familiar about FDI. Okay, FDI is nothing but it is something called as foreign direct investment. So, all these big companies, when they are coming to India or across the globe, you will find that all these big companies they are investing a lot. When I'm saying all these big companies, companies like Google, companies like Microsoft, companies like uh, your Ericsson's of the world. Okay, so all these companies they are coming, they are investing in a lot in various markets, and they are creating a lot of job opportunities. So typically, if you see here, from an from an FDI or the foreign direct investment standpoint, you will find that okay, India is being a very sweet spot. Okay, other than your United States and China, where where the economy has done tremendously well. But if you see on the other hand, okay, in last one year or during the time of pandemic also, India they have got an investment of close to 40 billion dollars. Okay. Otherwise also if you see the Sensex, okay, right now Sensex has already bought the share market. Okay, let me put it back there. Share market it has already touched like an 60,000 points. Okay. So that means that means all the big companies when they are coming and investing in India, okay, they, they can see a huge potential here. Why huge potential? Because there are a lot of stable opportunities there, policy wise, all the government, whatever the steps they are taking, it is a forward looking uh, steps. And, and when you have a stable government, that means you have always get a lot of opportunities. And typically if you see the overall industry, okay, because if you see on the right hand side of the industry, okay, you will find that what all the various areas, the various opportunities are coming. It is not only limited to one particular area. 
Hello? Am I audible, right? Am I going too fast? Or should I go a bit slow? Okay, fine. So if you see here, typically like services sector, then the computer, software, trading, telecom, then your hospital industry, auto industry, infra industry, and all. Okay, so there are multiple such industries are there, okay, where there are a lot of job opportunities are coming in future. And, and India, India being one of the global manufacturing hubs, you will find that this will grow day by day. And especially after pandemic, when when uh, there are a lot of such industries are shifting their ways from uh, your China to India. So there are multiple such opportunities you will find in in, in in coming years where you will find that the jobs are creating, there are a lot of opportunities that are coming and it is not necessarily that these opportunities are only for engineering students. So there are there are most of these 50 to 60 percent of the, these opportunities are primarily for the non-engineering students. People like you and me, okay, who are non-engineers, but, but there are multiple such opportunities are there for them as well. Okay. Typically, typically, typically in automobile sector, if you see that way. So automobile sector, we are the fourth largest manufacturing industry in the world. Telecom sector, that way. Recently, government they have changed their policies and now they have said that okay, 100 percent FDI means foreign direct investment, okay, one any companies they can invest in India. So that means any big companies they can come and they can start investing in India. Typically the services sector, again the services sector, the government they have opened FDI investment up to 49 percent. So all these big banks, okay, the multinational banks, they are coming and they are they are investing a lot in India. Not only limited to a national bank, but the international bank. You might have seen that there are so many international banks they are coming and they are investing in India. When they are doing so much of an investment that way, there are a lot of job opportunities are getting created. So so it is not necessarily that okay after your BSc, okay, you can only just go to direction one. There are multiple such directions are there, okay, where you can choose path A, path B, path C, okay, and you can easily flourish that there are so many opportunities are there. I, I know that okay, if we be from small place, we have this mindset that okay, what next after BSc or after BA or after commerce? Probably we will do MSc, BCom, or your MCom, or probably something PhD. Yes, I think I think I would say that people are not successful. Yes, they are doing well. But on the other hand, I think there are lot of other sectors are there also where you can possibly explore and you can you can possibly find out that okay there are a lot of such opportunities out there and for that for that i think i think you can easily easily tap, tap in those markets okay and it can give you a lot of good 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 uh, opportunities okay in your near future again when i'm saying all those things it is not necessarily that i'm saying that you guys have to follow this but but based on my experience industry experience i am sharing some of these uh, informations and if you think that okay, if you have some interest in some of these fields, you can always explore some of these areas and the possibilities. Yeah, and this is very interesting for me. Okay, how many of you really know the name of the company? Is okay. I have I put some of these logos. So how many of you really know the name of these companies? So probably I will come to some of you. How many of you know that okay? What is the what is the name of the first logo? The company's name. Can anybody raise their hand and can tell me what is the name of that company? Anyone? Whatever, whatever the any anything. Okay, probably the second one or the third one or the fourth one. Do you know any? Can you can you can you can you name the logo of any of these companies?
see, the first one is Uber. Okay, I think you all have heard about Uber. Okay, the first one is Uber, which is, is a car aggregator company. The second one is Ola, again, another car aggregator company. Third one is Baikus. Okay, fourth one is Petro. Petro is again where, where uh, the medical, medical uh, industry, okay, they have built a platform where, where because of this COVID scenario, lot of doctors, okay, they are all associated with this platform called Metro. And, and you may not have to go physically to any of the hospitals, okay, for, for minor, minor issues and the challenges. You can go and just book a slot over there. You can, you can, you can, uh, then, then you can just have an online consultancy with them. Okay. And then, then you, the first level of diagnosis and the first level of medical assistance can be, can be given to this platform called Macro. And 1MT, okay. 1MT is again another platform company where all the pharmacies, okay, now, nowadays, okay, in small cities it is not available, but in big cities, okay, you, you may not have to go and buy any, any, any medicine. What you, all you have to do that, okay, once you have consulted to a doctor, you will just need to upload the prescription and based on that prescription your medicines will be delivered to your home. Okay. Then Tesla. Very interesting thing. Okay. Tesla, you know what is the what is the significance of Tesla? Okay. Tesla is the first company in the world okay, who is coming up with this uh, lithium centric your battery and the electric cars. Okay. So they are they, they have positioned themselves in such a way that okay, because of this global warming and now all the big, 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 uh, your petroleum companies and all, they are all finding it very difficult, okay. So, so Tesla, Tesla, Tesla is one such company, okay, who are revolutionizing the auto industry and they are going for and your kind of an, uh, electric vehicles. Fourth one is Airbnb, okay, Airbnb and again it is very famous in your hospital bed industry where, where we earlier what we used to do we, we used to go and book our hotels and, and we used to go and pay rent but now Airbnb what they have done they have again built a kind of a platform where, where they have tied up with all the various hotels and on behalf of those hotels they are they are uh, offering various kinds of services to this uh, tourism industry Flipkart you know, WhatsApp you know, then PV, okay, PV is nothing but the policy bank where, where if, you, if you really want to buy any policies, medical policies or any such policies, okay, you need not have to go and just buy and see each of these policies. This particular platform will give you a kind of a comparison matrix where probably you want to compare five or six different policies, okay, and then it will give you some idea that which policies you should obtain. What is your age? What is your earning? Earning? How much you are earning? What is your livelihood and what not? Based on that, it will draw a, some sort of a competition using various artificial intelligence and the machine learning language and it will throw some value. And it will help you to decide that okay, which particular policy you should obtain. So, wh why I am discussing all those things? Because these are the digital transformations. Because earlier, almost like 10 or 15 years ago, it was all like an analog. Nothing was digital, but because of this digital and the Android device, because we all are using various Android devices, right? So these are all digital in nature, but don't use them only for chit chatting, only for doing Facebook or only for WhatsApp. But the true sense of digital transformation is that how you are using your Android device, okay, to take care of some of your day to day needs. I think that is more important. That is more important, and and. How it is possible? Why it is possible? Because the technology is changing. So earlier it was all about 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G. But, uh, but with the change of technology, there are a lot of things are also changing. And all these companies like Ericsson, Huawei, or Nokia, okay, they, they are some of the telecom equipment manufacturing companies. They are enabling all these companies to come and build this platform and because of this transmission technology video 4G and 5G, okay now in India the 5G is yet to start because there are certain kind of licensing policy and all those things is still pending. But once it is in place then you will find that all there will be major transformations in our day to life. And and most of the devices today when we use okay, be it your fridge, be it your 
uh, with your printer, with your uh, washing machine and everything, okay, in future you will find that those are all IP enabled. As you know that, I think some of you know that what is IP internet protocol. Most of, most of these uh, machines, it has its own IP base and because of its technology, one can interact with any devices, okay, so all these devices can interact with each other. So I can give you a classic example like okay, in future what you will see that how you have gone out, the temperature is 40 degree and before you are entering home you are just sending a text at home and you, you, are, you are instructing the AC to switch on and based on your body temperature the switch, uh, the AC will be on and it will, it will set the temperature. So the moment you will enter your home and you will find that okay the AC is already working. It is already 2 o'clock, by the time when you will reach home, probably say that it is 2 o'clock, you are very hungry, you are again send a command to your to your uh, microwave and the food is already there and you will instruct that okay, the food should be hot, okay. So it will, it, it will uh, the food will be ready by that time. So it is, it is, it is, it is happening in, in various parts of the world, it will soon happen in India also. It, it looks like that we are in a matrix world, but it is not necessarily that we are not in matrix world, it is already started happening. In India also it will start happening and it is all possible because of the technology amalgamation, because of technology like 5G and IoT, what we call as Internet of Things, okay, which is nothing but all the devices have some IP protocols and because of this technology you can you can map each and every of devices and you can you can you can talk to them, okay. And, and, and they will behave like a human being. See, I, I will not spend too much of a time here, but, but this particular slide, if you see here, uh, Amazon, we all know that Amazon is nothing but it is more like a, uh, your e-commerce company where we are buying and selling all those things. But it is not necessarily that Amazon is only a kind of an e-commerce company. Amazon is also a bank. So if you see all these things, okay, Amazon Pay, then Amazon Prime, Amazon Protect, Amazon Allow, Amazon Reload. So these are nothing but they are behaving like a bank. So Amazon, Amazon these days, what they are doing, they are slowly entering into the space of the other banking sector as well. So. I don't know because uh, probably probably when I last visited any any bank physically probably not in last four or five years and I don't know that whether there is a need for a physical bank or not. I don't think that there is a need because these days what is happening if you, if you really want to do any kind of a transaction you can easily link your bank account to your UPI and you can easily do a transfer transfer of money. So all are becoming digital. Okay, you do not have to go for a physical physical currency. If you really again, if you, if you really want to, if you really want to do any kind of a transactions, again, it, it is very easy. If you really want to open any kind of a bank account, again, you do not have to physically go and fill up a form. You can do online and you can do it. So that means the the industry is changing. The industry is changing so significantly rapidly that one did not have to go and physically go and just draw any any kind of uh, your money from a bank. Okay, you can do all this digitally. So, 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 Amazon, 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 as I said, that okay, Amazon, they are into everything slowly. They are entering into everything. And, and if you see here, that for all these areas, if you see here, you don't need to be an engineer for all this. The process is someone who understands the guidelines, someone who understands the various policies, okay. One can, one can get expertise in these particular areas and they can easily see a great future, okay, in, in this particular area and domain. So this is this is one classic example. If if any one of you want to opt your career in a banking sector or a BFSI sector, what we call as banking, finance, and insurance sector, probably this is one of those classic examples. And for this, most of most of these companies, okay, they are relying on people who, who are coming with their graduation background. Need not necessarily be a kind of an engineer because these are these are a kind of a non-technical but a functional role. So once you have the understanding that how the overall overall dynamics in the banking sector works, okay, 
you can easily get into this. So for that, again, like typically when you want to get a job in SBI and if you really want to become an officer, you need to appear for a PO kind of an exam. But for this, okay, you need not have to do that. And, and such such companies, okay, they are technically so rich that they, they, they are much more advanced. Okay, they are much more advanced. Okay, and SBI is completely lacking on this particular area because they, with, with time, they couldn't able to make more inroads into a technology field. So most of the most of the private banks, they are doing enormous investment in a technology area and, and 60 to 70 percent of such jobs are going to non-engineer students. So I, I can see I can see that there is a huge potential is there and slowly from tier one cities, they are slowly getting into a tier two and tier three cities, cities like Pura and all. They are slowly getting, penetrating into all these areas and slowly they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are investing a lot and they are, they are, they are making a uh, lot of changes going in our day to day life. Similarly, I think I have talked about like an Airbnb. Okay, Airbnb is again another platform where, where you need not to go like, if, if you see on the right hand side, okay, these are all various 5 star or 7 star kind of models. Okay. Where, where in our, during our earlier days, what we used to do, okay, if you really want to travel to any, any place, you will go and you will book any hotel. But these days, people prefer to go to Airbnb and they want to see that, okay, what is the best rate I can get. So the business model is, Airbnb, they are a kind of a middleman. Okay, let me, okay, it is something very shrewd, but this is not the case, but they are a kind of a, they are a kind of a uh, platform. Okay, and they are, they are interacting with the buyer and the seller. So buyer is people like you and me, okay, who wants to go and book a room. And the seller is nothing but these are all companies okay, who are selling in, on behalf of them. And, and, and what they are doing, okay, they, are, they, they have built the platform in such a way that all these all these photos in, information will be available in Airbnb. It will give you some sort of an kind of a preference input, some sort of a comparison, and and the and, 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 and the middleman, okay, or the Airbnb, they are getting some commissions out of it and they are running the show. The best part, the best part about Airbnb is that they do not have their own hotel or they don't own any rooms on their own. And they can scale up very quickly because they are tying up with all such hotels. But whereas if you go and Take an example of like an Marriott, JW Marriott, okay? If you really have to build any infrastructure like this particular uh, building, if you really want to build this structure, probably it will take around 6 to 8 months to build this infrastructure. But, but for a company like Airbnb, okay, they do not have to build any such physical inventory. They can always go and tie up with all these, all these companies and they can, they can offer services on the other. So, 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 if you see the typical trend of such companies, because now slowly from your seller to buyer kind of a relationship, it is slowly getting into your platform based kind of an industry where, where there are a lot of, lot of such opportunities are coming up. Like in Airbnb, what kind of a possible opportunities you can think of? You forget about the technology part of it, how they are, they are building the platform, how they are running. Uh, uh, you are running the ports, different algorithms. But typically, like when you, if you go and open an Airbnb kind of a site, you will find that okay, there are a lot of contents out there. Okay, so that means somebody who is a non-engineer and one has to create a content. Okay, he can be a content writer. Then someone okay who who wants to give a better brain. Okay, between or uh, someone who is who doesn't understand that okay, how this algorithm works. Okay. A non-engineer can go and give them a, uh, a kind of a direction that okay whether you should opt for option one or option two. Okay, so these are these are all functional based kind of a role. Okay, where most of the most of the graduates like people even me okay who are doing uh, and who are working in this particular industry. Similarly, I think you all or most of you are using like a geo. You all have heard about. Reliant Geo, right? So most of, some of you are using it, Reliant Geo and whatnot. But if you see Geo as a whole, if you see they are, they are in, mostly into everything, okay? They are only not limited to your telecom, 
But they are into everything. If you see them, they are into retail, they are into electronics, they are into e-commerce, they are into oil, they are into media, healthcare, uh, online and whatnot. So if you if you see the inner circle, the reliance and the core circle, so the core circle is nothing, but those are all reliance subsidiaries. Okay? So they are all the companies of reliance group and the outer circle if you see they are okay, they are the competition. Like, like if, you, if you see that Geo, Reliance and Geo, okay, and the telecom sector, if you see that Geo has, it is one of the subsidiary of the Reliance industry, and they are competing with companies like Airtel, Vodafone, and IDEA kind of companies. Okay. On the other hand, if you see, if you see that uh, network gaming, so a lot of you may may not be knowing that network gaming is owned by Reliance Group, which is a media channel. Again. Network group, okay, they, they are competing with Star and C. Again, if you see there, okay, most of these companies, okay, it is not necessarily be a technology centric company. Some of these are non technical, okay, technology centric companies, and there, there are a lot of huge potential is there, people like you and me, okay, and, and there are a lot of, lot of opportunities are coming up, and they are absorbing a lot of such people. Like again, again, if you see that MY, okay, MY is one of the educate platform, educational platform from Reliance, and they are competing with your Bytus. Similarly, if you see, if you see that your Geo Money, okay, Reliance, they have their own UPI platform. You all know that what is UPI platform is there. Okay, so like Reliance Geo, Geo as a money, Geo Money, it is their own proprietary. But they are competing with Paytm and the Google Google Pay of the world. So if you see that, way, so holistically, if you see there, all such companies, be it your Reliance, be it your Apple, be it your Microsoft, be it your Google, okay, they are not only into one particular area. Probably they are into almost like all these areas, okay, and they are competing with each other. And it is not again really necessarily that you did not you have to be an engineer to get into some of these areas. Even the non-engineers also, they are doing extremely good, okay? And they are doing a lot of, lot of good things in the industry. Yeah, I think, I think this is one of my goals in here. Because I am I'm, I'm, uh, part of a uh, telecom industry where, where I am uh, currently working across the globe. And I am helping various operators to implement uh, various YG initiatives. While in India, we are here to start, but we have already started talking to uh, the tribe telecom regulatory authority uh, of India uh, that uh, how the 5G will be implemented here. So we currently various discussions are going on with the uh, Ministry of Telecom. But sooner or later, uh, 5G will be implemented in India also. But before that, there are some policy related things one has to take into consideration because any services when you start, it is like you need to first uh, get a kind of a license. Like if you really want to want to drive a car, unless and until you don't have a license, you cannot drive a car. Similarly, in the telecom industry, if you really want to start any service, be it your 3G, 4G, or 5G, first you need to get a license from Ministry of Telecom, and only you can start the services. So if you typically see that okay, from your 1990s, okay, late late uh, 1990s to your 2020, in last. 15 to 20 years or 20 to 25 years, okay, there are a lot of transformation that has taken place. From your analog, we have to move into a digital environment where, where all the things are very easy, very accessible, and using our handheld device, we can easily come into anything and everything, which was not the case almost like 15 or 20 years ago. Now, because of this technological change, there are a lot of, lot of new revenues are opening in, our, in, in front of us. And, and, and Somebody who really, really have a good, good uh, appetite about the technology, who has a good, good uh, attitude, okay, towards learning new technologies. I think these are some of the areas, okay. It can, it can uh, bring a lot of transformations in the coming days. Again, technology standpoint, I think I have covered some of these technologies, but, uh, but, but next 10 to 15 years, you will find that, okay. These technologies or these buzzwords will going to transform our day-to-day -day life. Be it your 5G, be 
your cloud computing, in your AR, VR, like and like and augmented reality, virtual reality, and all those things. So we will be going to transform our life like anything, like in quantum form computing automations. Because if you go and if you if you if you ever happen to go to any automobile industry, you will find that these days people they are not doing all the physical work. It is all controlled by machines. And who is controlling the machines? People like you and me. Again, for that you may not have to know the, the, the mechanics of uh, the technology. For that all you need to know that once you have that software is in place, you probably need to fix certain parameters and you need to send some command and that particular robot will going to work on behalf of you. It will going to fix all your tires or your doors or your mirrors and everything. So, so, so similarly, Similarly, in mining industry, in, in the aeronautics industry, in your in your travel industry, so these things, these such technologies are bringing a lot of revolution. So again, it is not necessarily that okay, you need to know the coding. No, definitely not. As long as okay, if you fun, if functionally, if you know that okay, how that particular industry works, and if you have a good grasp about the functional aspect, you can easily, easily, easily get into it. Such industries very easily, and you can easily learn such technology. Yeah, again, this is as per NASCOM. NASCOM is a kind of an industry body in India okay, who, who every year they come up with uh, a kind of an uh, uh, they, they come up with uh, that okay, how the overall industry will look like, what kind of an opportunities are there in future, how, how the industry should move what kind of an, uh, various courses one should offer in various engineering and the non-engineering colleges. So it is a kind of a governing body where all the, all the, uh, your, in, uh, various, various uh, industry people, they, they join hands and they, they give a, some direction to the government. And as a part of these initiatives, then government, they decide that how the policies will be changed, how the policies will be framed, and in order to do any good things for an economy, they define the go forward plan for, 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 for the industry. So some of these, some of these, if you see the some of these future skills, again as I said that in my previous slide, that okay, how how the overall industry will evolve in the next 15 to 20 years. Okay. So some of these areas will going to dominate our future in coming days. I think, I think this is what I thought that probably, probably I will give you some gist. It is, it is, it is not possible for me to cover everything and anything within this half an hour time frame. But I am pretty sure that at least you will get some idea that okay, how industry is evolving, how industry is changing, and how in future the various opportunities are coming in front of us. And, and if really one of you are interested to get into in some of these industries, what is this required for you to get into such industry? I think that is what the whole intention was, so that at least at least you can get some idea that how 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 the whole world is moving towards a different dimension. While we are all busy in our day-to-day -day academic life, but there are a lot more things are happening across the globe, and I think this should give you some sort of an idea that how the industry will look like in near future. I think that's all what I have to say. In case if you have any questions and answers, feel free to ask me. Thank you very much.
I don't know if you're allowed to ask any question. And I believe our research person will try his best to answer your queries. And as, uh, as the team has been since the beginning, that there are great opportunities. This is a great opportunity for you to clear your doubts. Whatever doubts you have, whatever ideas you might be having, you can clear those doubts that come from the ideas. So yeah, the class, the session is open for questions. Please raise your hands and so that you know, we can know.
and and it is not easy to learn anything and everything but you have to start somewhere okay first if you start with but point number 1 then slowly you can move into point 2 point 3 and point 4 and gradually you okay, get once you have an appetite to learn more you can get into the whole area and you know that okay how eventually the automobile industry works i have given you one such example typically i can give you multiple examples also like in telecom okay telecom when i have started my career i have started my career in 2003 so that time we all know that okay it is only telecom telecom means okay you will make some calls during our time okay for incoming also they used to make charges okay but once once the telecom industry has started growing then then your uh, policies has changed they have come up with new policies and they have slowly started implementing various policies so all i have started because the i began management graduate i have always always started from at a management level but there are a lot of non engineers who are there also they have started like okay selling sims okay so i am not saying that okay selling sim it's it's not a good job yes it is a very good job okay then slowly okay from your one circle like in thura okay you have started selling something from thura okay you have moved to in body in in northeast then at a national